Why is diabetes so complicated? Hi, my name is Dr. Omar Awan. I'm a physician and public health contributor for Forbes.com, and I want to demystify diabetes and make it easily understood. Diabetes is a huge problem in the United States. More than 37 million Americans have diabetes, and 96 million Americans have something called prediabetes, which is a condition where your blood sugar levels are high, but not high enough to be diagnosed with diabetes. And it's the eighth leading cause of death in America. So what is diabetes? Well, diabetes is a long lasting illness or condition that affects the way your food gets transformed into energy. So in a normal person who does not have diabetes, when you eat food, your blood sugar levels rise in your blood and a hormone called insulin is secreted from the pancreas to take that blood sugar from your blood into cells to use it for energy. But in cases of diabetes, you either don't produce insulin or you can't use that insulin effectively to decrease your blood sugar levels. And when you have more blood sugar levels that are high, that's gonna damage your blood vessels, your nerves with time, and that can lead to very serious consequences resulting in heart disease, kidney failure, blindness, and ultimately death. Diabetes is actually the number one cause for kidney failure in America, and it's actually the number one cause for adult blindness in America. So there are actually multiple different types of diabetes. There's you know, three major types of diabetes, type one diabetes, type two diabetes, and gestational diabetes. Type one diabetes is typically diagnosed when you're a child. It means that your body doesn't produce insulin or can't produce insulin. It's usually an autoimmune disease where your body attacks its own cells. Type 2 diabetes is usually acquired. It's usually acquired later in you know, adulthood. And that's when your body has insulin, but it can't use it effectively. So it can't use it to decrease blood sugar levels. And thus, you get the whole cascade of complications that I was talking about. And of course, gestational diabetes is when you acquire diabetes during pregnancy, when you're pregnant, when females are pregnant with a child. So... That's what diabetes is in a nutshell. And how is it that diabetes usually pre presents? What do patients experience? Well, the symptoms are pretty common amongst all the three different types of diabetes, with the exception that in type one diabetes, symptoms can occur a little bit more suddenly, whereas in type two diabetes, symptoms are more gradual or they may not even be present at all. But typically most patients experience tiredness, increased thirst, increased hunger, increased urination, uh, numbness and tingling in the hands and the feet. Oftentimes they'll have skin infections that are very hard to heal. All these are heralding signs for diabetes. So if you have any of these symptoms, you may want to be tested for diabetes. Now, how do you get tested for diabetes and what are the different types of tests for diabetes? There's really three main or more common types of tests for diabetes and they're all blood tests. They're all tests that you get at a lab or at a doctor's office. And you know, one is the fasting blood glucose level. One is a hemoglobin A1C level. And one is a random blood glucose level. So a random blood glucose level is, you know, you, you wake up, you go to the doctor, you just get a blood glucose level, you don't need to fast. And any value that's more than 200 on that random blood glucose level may indicate that you have diabetes and you often need to get another confirmatory test. Now, a fasting blood glucose level means that you must fast before you take the test, meaning that you know you go to sleep, you shouldn't eat for about eight hours, and then you go to the doctor's office, you get the test, and then the test is read as you know normal pre-diabetes or diabetes. And usually a normal fasting blood glucose level is something under 100. If you're between 100 and 125, you have pre-diabetes, which means that you know it's elevated but not quite high enough for you to be diagnosed with diabetes. And of course, if that fasting blood glucose level is 126 or more, that means that you have diabetes. And hemoglobin A1C is more of a long-term test for your blood sugar. It, it measures the average blood sugar level over the course of two or three months. So it's a better test to assess your long-term control for uh, diabetes and for sugar levels. And a hemoglobin A1C that's normal is usually 
less than 5.7%. If you're at 57 to 6.4%, you're at the pre-diabetes stage. And if your hemoglobin A1C is 6.5% or more, it usually means that you have diabetes. So uh, those are the tests that we typically use and doctors use to diagnose diabetes. But I think by far the most important thing to understand is that for most people, diabetes is completely preventable. 90 to 95% of patients that have diabetes have type 2 diabetes. The diabetes where you have insulin, but your body can't use it effectively to decrease blood sugar levels. And for these type of patients, it's highly preventable because if you do certain lifestyle modifications, like you lose weight, you eat healthier with lower carbohydrates in your diet, you stop smoking, you exercise, you can drastically decrease your chances of getting diabetes. And this is very true, especially for the patients that have type 2 diabetes, which accounts for the vast majority of patients that have diabetes, 90 to 95%. You know, there have been some studies that show that patients that decrease their body weight by even 5 to 7% and they exercise five times a week for, you know, 30 minutes a day, decrease their chances of getting diabetes type 2 by up to 58%. I mean, that's a huge, huge number. So it's really up to us to, you know, change our habits, change our lifestyle so that we don't end up with diabetes. I hope diabetes is a bit more clear to you guys. Thank you so much for your attention. And as always, please be kind to yourself and to those around you.